Hi and welcome. My name is Tyler Olson and I am here to tell you a little bit about service dogs. I myself have one as you can tell in the picture. This is Brogan. But before I get to talking about the service dogs, I'm going to let you know a little bit about me. My journey starts in a little town called Lake Mills, Iowa. It's actually the same town that your teacher's from. That's how I got asked to do this. So shout out to her for asking me and giving me this opportunity. I was your average kid growing up in high school, had lots of friends, enjoyed activities, was out for a lot of sports. Well, while I was out for football playing a game, I made a tackle during a game and ended up breaking my neck and causing a spinal cord injury. The spinal cord injury led to me being in a wheelchair full time. I learned a lot about myself after this, a lot about my friends, a lot about the world. So it was actually not a good thing, but in the end, I've learned a ton and wouldn't be the person I am today if I wouldn't have been through or wouldn't have gone through what I've been through. So, and a positive thing is, is that I've learned about service dogs and I've had two now. And boy, have they changed my life and for the better. This was my first angel and his name was Charlie. This is a picture from our graduation after our three week training course. After graduation and moving back home, we did everything together. I'm saying everything. He finished high school with me, then my senior year, he went to college with me, everything. I mean, the guy even went to prom with me. And as you can tell, we were the best looking group there. But before Charlie and I were able to do everything together, he went through a lot of training. On average, helping pause service dogs usually take anywhere from two and a half to three and a half years to train, depending on the dog and how smart they are. So let's talk about this great organization and the training that goes on to make these dogs so special. Helping Paws is a nonprofit organization furthering people's independence and quality of life through the use of assistant dogs or service dogs. These dogs aren't raised and trained for just one singular use. You could have somebody like me bound to a wheelchair needing help to do things, or they're even trained to deal with people that are dealing with post-traumatic distress and different things like that. Now let's talk through this cycle of what the training and everything involves in the life before a service dog is matched with this partner. To start out, Helping Paws actually has its own breeding program. They have breeder dogs that have great qualities that they want in their dogs, and they use those to create these puppies. So once a puppy is born, uh, a litter is born, I guess you'd say, they are um, divvied out to different um, volunteers from the community that volunteer to train this dog and they're called foster homes. As soon as the pups are old enough to go to their foster homes the training begins and the training starts with wearing the blue coat. These little guys start wearing these coats so early that they're so used to it by the time they're older so you start them young. And this way the pups know that when they're wearing their coat they're working. And each Helping Paws dog definitely knows this. Once home and with the foster trainers, the dogs weekly go in for a training class, sometimes two times a week even. I can't say enough about these people that volunteer their time to teach these dogs. It's, they're the real heroes in all of this. But over the next couple of years, these trainers will socialize the dog, teach them in these weekly classes, and do everything that they need to learn up to the matching process. Once a dog has completed all of its training, then comes the matching process, which is the most important part. And I'm gonna use my matching process to kind of show you how important it is. So after my first dog, Charlie, passed away, and I was finally at a point where I was ready to entertain a new, getting a new service dog, I went up and met with, I think, five different dogs. And none of them, really, I just, I didn't feel that bond that I had felt with Charlie. It, I, it's hard to explain. It's like you don't just get a service dog to get a dog. This dog's going to be helping you do all kinds of different tasks and things that you need to do. So you need a dog that listens to you and just it loves you. Um, you really just won't become a great team or a team at all if if that connection isn't there. So here is me 
and Brogan, my pride and joy now, my my guy that I I would do anything for, to be honest. This was the day that we met and matched, and it was, I just knew right from the start that Brogan was the one. After matching, we spent three weeks every day training during a mandatory class. During class, we learned many things from just general need to know things about dogs because some people haven't ever had a dog before. They've gotten a service dog. And then we also work on uh, different periods of training and just trying different commands that the dog knows and working on things that we will be doing in the future. The Helping Paws staff is there during this class time and they're very helpful and very knowledgeable since they've been working with these dogs and the foster home parents for a long time. Once the three-week class is finished, then comes graduation and meeting the foster parents of your dog. It's always kind of an emotional day, and like I keep repeating, I can't give enough credit to these foster home people that teach these dogs for a couple years and then give them away. I mean, just imagine you getting a puppy at home and having it for two or three years, making it your own, essentially, and then all of a sudden you have to give it to somebody else. I just... I. I, this is a picture of Brogan and I with his trainer, Larry and Jean Buckley, and I can't say enough about these people. Behind every service dog is definitely a special person, so that's something to always think about as well when you see a service dog. Of all the training and all the love that goes into these dogs, they're very important to a lot of people. After graduation and everything, it's time to go home and start time to get to work. Uh, and, and work in your dog, and they love to work. That's that's the best part, is that the dogs enjoy you and working for you. But before I start showing some of my favorite things that Brogan helps me with, or that he's able to do, I do want to make a little note that um, some things not to do around service dogs. We We who do have service dogs just ask that you ask before touching. So anytime you see a dog wearing a vest and you know that it's working, just be sure that you go up to the person first before going to pet it or really even talking to it. It's important that the dog is con concentrated on the person that it's helping for and you might just be in a, a distraction. So just something to think about. Brogan, or bro as I call him, and I have been together for four years now uh coming up on five here this fall so we've had some really awesome times together and i don't know what i would do without him just like my first dog these these animals are are just can't say enough about them so i hope i taught you something the next few clips are just some of the thing just scratching the surface of what brogan can do but it's just some of my favorite things that he can help with and and do so enjoy thank you the door. Good boy. Shut the door. Good boy. Yep, bring it here, bud. Get more laundry. Hey, get the laundry. Good boy. Dog. Hey Brogan, can you pick up the trash? Get it. Let's put it in the trash. Bring it in. Good boy. Can you get the other piece? Go look. Go get the other piece. Good boy. Right here. Put it in the trash. Good boy. Good boy. Pick it up. Carry it. Carry it. Pick it up. That's it. Good boy.
Good dog. You get in the mail. Good boy. <laughs>